everybody, how are you? This is Andrea and welcome to a new Face Up Stories. Do you remember this pretty face? It is the You Know Lucy's that we were fixing and hot gluing a while ago. Well, I am sure that you all agree that it was about time I worked on her, so let's begin. By the way, if you're new here and want to know what kind of dolls these are and where you can get them from, check the description box of this video. I have a ton of information, links and resources just for you to get you started. For today's face up I will mostly use pastels and pencils. I want to show you that having an airbrush is not really necessary. It can definitely make things faster and a bit easier, especially when working on dark resin or when you want to achieve extremely bright colors all in one pass. But I think that 90% of face-ups can be done without the need of an airbrush. Okay, so, so far I focused on the eyeliner, eyelid crease and a bit on the lips. If you're interested in knowing the basic materials for face-ups that I recommend, I made a video all about it under my Back to Basic series. But I also listed and linked products in the description box. Same goes with the sealant. We all know how important sealing is to achieve a successful face-up, so make sure you are equipped with as much knowledge about it as possible. As you saw, I added some pink pastel around the tear ducts. Now I continue with the line work, so here I am drawing the first layer of the eyelashes. As I always say, layering is key to a good face-up. This first one is more to set the foundation of all the elements. I am not expecting any of the colors to be the shade and intensity that I want. Speaking of eyelashes, people draw them in very different ways. There is no right and wrong, they can all be facing the same direction or not, they can be long or short, dense or sparse, it all depends on your personal taste. But if I had to give you one tip for good eyelashes, it would be to keep your pencils really sharp at all times. That way you keep the lines thin and sharp. For the eyebrows, I use a mix of materials a bit of pencils, some pastels and an eraser. The eraser is so helpful when shaping and modifying the eyebrow shape. I really highly recommend using one similar to what I use. I keep my eraser sharp with an exacto knife so I can create the eyebrow shape that I want easily. Here you can see me redrawing the eyeliner again. It is so important to take your time with this, and believe me, most of the parts will take a few passes to get to the right point. Now I start adding pastels all around her face. I build color intensity slowly and patiently by sealing the face multiple times along the way. I also make the eyelashes a bit darker with some grey color. This is why I use different colors for the eyelashes. I started with brown and now continue with grey to create a nice ombre effect. The resin color of this Yunoa is quite yellow, which is kind of standard for this doll. All my past Yunoas were yellower than my mini fees, even when I purchased them new from the company. I don't really mind it as much, but to make the face-up work better in terms of colors, I add some purples to the shading. That will help balancing out all the yellow. Okay, so the base of the face-up is done. Now let's give her a nice tattoo. I am using my Fintech Gold palette and for the guides and sketch I use a white pencil which is really easy to erase later on. What I am drawing here is basically moon phases. This tattoo idea seems very popular at music festivals and since I've been working on the Chibi Zodiac series I thought I could do a doll inspired by that as well. 
Alright, it is time for this month's Instagram features. If my videos have inspired you and helped you with your own projects, don't forget to tag your posts using the hashtag AndreaTutorials. That way I can see what you're all up to and you might be one of the lucky people who gets featured in one of my videos. Alright, the tattoo is done. Let's move to the next step. I apply some nice purpley shimmer, again to counter the yellow. And then I apply some gloss. Don't forget that I linked all of the materials including shimmer and gloss in the description. Now let's apply the eyelashes. Ok, so here is the final face up, but don't run away yet because we are still not done. She really needs some nice eyes, so let's make some. Here I have the eye bases ready to go. I am a bit torn about the size. I can't decide between the 10mm and 12mm eyes. I guess I will have to make both versions. I will do 4 different colors of each size. I want her to have heterochromia, that is why I don't need pairs of the same color. Ok, I start by applying some Liquitex matte medium into the iris section. That will help with the painting so that the pigment doesn't separate from the surface. If you want to learn how I make eyes, including how to create eye molds, how to cast bases, all the materials and tools, check my eye making series. Then I am picking the pupils. Special thanks to Sprouty Doll for sending me so many eye making goodies. Alright, time to paint the iris. When the paint is all dry, I glue in the pupils. And when all of that is done, it is time to apply Lisa Pavelka. If there are any bubbles that you can't get rid of with the toothpick, then you can use a candle lighter. That should definitely help. Let's put these eyes under the UV light to cure. And while we wait, I shall enjoy some cookies and tea. Are you having anything? Ok, here are our eyes. Let's try them on and decide which ones we like the most. Meanwhile, I want to give a massive thanks and big hugs to my Patreon family, who are making these videos possible. Thank you for enabling me to invest so much more of my time into creating videos. Without you, I would not have been able to afford it. Alright, here is my eye selection for her. It was a difficult decision, but I went with 10mm eyes. Ok, time to give her some clothes. I think she will look nice in this white mint dress for now, but eventually I would love to find a more suitable outfit for her. And probably, I think it would be all in gold. I think that would look nice. Alright, so here she is. The wig she's wearing right now is only temporary. I am working on a new one as I speak. If you want to tag along and see the full process of her wig, hop on onto Patreon. It's only about the price of a coffee per month to get all the current ongoing exclusive content, behind the scenes, doll fashion discussions and so much more. But yeah, as soon as she's all done, I will make an update video here on YouTube so you can all see her. Well, this is all I have for today. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, comment and share. And if this was your first time on my channel, I would love to have you subscribed so you don't miss out on any future videos. 
Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye.